Hey guys, so she's not going out in the immediate future, but the belly of this is a little bit embarrassing. So it's nearly, nearly June, it's the end of May. A couple of warm days, so I'm going to brave it. Not 100% brave it, but I haven't got my dry suit, I've got a wet suit down. Uh, I'm going to jump in and give her a scrub. We've got a bit of a southerly breeze, so when the southerly comes in, it blows all the shit up and um, the water is not that clear. I'm hoping if I put you on a, on a head mount when I get in, I might be able to capture some of the, the footage. So I'm gonna stop talking now, I'll get, get a wetsuit on. Um, get a head mount sorted out and somewhere to secure it to, my, to me somehow. Um, yeah, and hopefully see you on the water in a minute. Hey guys, welcome to uh, Sailing Foxy Lady. This is my full restoration of a 1973 30-foot Arista Uh, please like and subscribe if you would like to follow our progress. Thank you. Oh, hey guys. The water is quite um, murky. The visibility isn't great. Should do a swim of the inside. Underneath here. Oh, that's perfect. No concerns whatsoever. That is easy. What I do, I just quickly uh, don my mask. We'll have a look underneath.
like a half of a half done. Oh. Okay, that's hard work. Oh. So, I haven't done the kills. I've, I've done down to the kills, but the stub kills are a little bit too deep. Oh, I'll have to do it in my tanks on. Um, everything else. I can't see any blistering whatsoever. Um, uh, also, the anti is coming off in a few places. Uh, that's pretty much a given. But the condition of the surface all the way through is amazeballs. I'm guessing it's epoxy underneath there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the state of that. It's tempting to do the whole lot, but I think a couple of hours in the water would be enough. So I'm going to do the other side of this side and then save the joys of doing this for maybe next weekend. Hey guys, I'm going to quickly show you the, uh, the craziness I'm working with here. So this is me planning for the for the dodger roof. So I've got the bit before well, well marked out, um, drew the line of the cord in the curve. So this is the the negative if you like. So this, this will sit outside of the, um, the dodger roof. So this is going to, this shape here is going to be the shape that my mould will sit in. Now, what else I've done is I've recorded the radius on the coach roof, coach side radius, so, to, so I can make it the same as the existing coach, sort of make it look like it's part of the boat. What I've also done is the coach front corner radius on the front window round to the, uh, the sides is this radius here recorded here in between the two bits of green tape and then the front radius so from the coach roof down to the base that's the angle angle of attack that it sits at so they're the three bits I've recorded so I'm going to try and <laughs> this one initially just to get that, that radius on the end. So I'll get this marked on, place that over the top, mark the radius on, get the depth that I require, I'll score it off, then I'll, I'll draw a perfectly straight line, cut it out, and then using the same template, do it another three, maybe four times, everyone get out of the sheet of wood. On a side note, with COVID, Brexit, whatever it is this is all i could get today so there's not i normally buy i'm gonna get 12 mil get hardwood so i can use it for something else on the boat 12 mil softwood sheet of 12 mil softwood 32 pound and that's just gonna well when i'm done with it it'll just end up going on the fire pit uh, absolute outrageous um what i do i say i'm going to draw this outline 
work out the radius is. Once I've drawn it all up, I'll, uh, I'll tune back in. Cheers. Okay, I'm just going to film this uber quickly. However, I ballsed it up. Um, because the mould was just sort of taped on nilly willy, it's not even. So that end is obviously that there is a lot wider than that there. So when I put it on here square on the base, this end is a lot higher than that end. Therefore, for me to use this as a, a straight edge, if you like, it's about 10, 10 centimeters out. So to that end, I'm going to flip it over, start again, this time measuring where the mold, the template comes, that it's level and then mark it on. Hey guys, so I love squandering money. So a sheet, all I've got was two templates out of it. I need to do two meters, so it's going to need at least, an, at least another one, if not two sheets. The way it's worked out, I've got this as an off cut, where that's not big enough for a template, and I couldn't even make these any smaller to still fit the need. So this, because this here, you know, the breaking strain on a bit of soft ply, I don't want to go any smaller than this really. I was just going to end up getting broken when I'm moving it around. But I've cut two sheets. Um, so I'm back. I'm going back to work now. When I get back, I'll cut this template out onto the next one, draw it on, keep using this as the, the primary template. So I know they're definitely the same. And, uh, and I'll work out what I need from there. Yeah. Living the dream. Hey guys, um, I had a mental weekend, absolutely mental. Um, I had to put new brake shoes on my truck. I had to remove the ABS from my bike. So my bike decided the brakes would stop working um, intermittently, which is obviously not not particularly safe. Uh, I looked it up, it was a known ABS fault on them. Um, it's about three and a half grand to get it sorted out of BMW. So I basically disabled the ABS, ripped out the module, the down there, this bloody thing, um, and just wired the brakes up to be conventional brakes. So a couple of loops on the on the hoses. Anyway, I digress. So that's why this weekend's been a little bit all over the shop. Um, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Um, hopefully, weeks to come, I'll get a chance to be a bit more structured um, and a bit more of a plan rather than darting around a headless chicken trying to get everything done in a in a day and a half. But cheers guys, thank you.